Grinding through the tech trees in War Thunder can be an absolutely painful chore. I'm going to discuss in this video the method I use to grind through a little bit more efficiently and take a look at what works for me. Let's dive in. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the method I use to grind out the tech trees in War Thunder. Um, this is not the only way. It's probably not the best way. It's the way that works for me. Uh, but like I did in my video talking about grinding upgrades and stock jets, I'm going to encourage you, um, if you've got some tips or if you've got a method that works better for you, uh, drop a comment. You know, um, grinding the tech trees is a horrible, horrible grind. Um, and, you know, we can all learn from each other from it. Maybe you've got a cool tip that I never thought of or works a little bit better than the way I do it. Um, you know, drop it in the comments and we can all learn from each other and have a better time. So here is my Swedish aviation tree that I'm using as an example. Um, the reason I'm using this instead of like my Soviet air tree, which I also have fully unlocked, or like the Chinese one, is that the Swedish air tree uh, is relatively new, and it's a good example uh, because they're of of the method I'm going to describe. Because um, in the in the other tech trees like Germany and and the Soviet tech tree and and whatnot, a lot of the vehicles are really good, and you know I got a lot of use out of them. And frankly, some of them like the Soviet tech tree and the Americans, I ground those out years and years ago before I really paid attention to, like, efficiency or any of the stuff I'm going to talk about here. The Swedish tech tree is new, and you're going to notice that I've got everything unlocked, um, you know, except for a couple of these premium vehicles. But not everything is spaded, and that's the key. Um, like, for example, this J20 here. I've flown this, you know, less than half a dozen times, probably, not much. But B-17B... I've, I've had this, you know, baited for a while. So, the reason is, at the lower tiers, in rank 1 and rank 2, I just picked a vehicle I was good at. The B-17B, I happened to be pretty good with. Um, and I used it to grind out, you know, once I got to it. I used it to grind out the rest of rank, rank 1 and rank 2 up to the J-22A. So... With the lower tiered vehicles, rank one and rank two, generally I just pick one that I'm that I'm good with and use that. However, if you're a somewhat newer player, if you've joined War Thunder within the last couple of years, um, and you go through the introductory missions when you first set up your account, this is something that wasn't in the game a long time ago when I started. But if you go through the the first introductory sequence, it'll get you. Um, through unlocking a, a rank one premium vehicle for free. So if you've done that and you have a free rank one premium vehicle, use that instead of like the B-17B. Um, but if not, just find a plane you're good with. And I'll talk about premium stuff later. Um, just find a plane you're good with, use it to grind out the rest of this trash, and then figure out what you're going to use in rank two. In my case, it was the J-22A. Um, I went with this because I was relatively good with it. And I used it to grind out these other planes. Now, once you get up into rank three, this is where you want to start really paying attention to the method I'm going to describe here. And that is to take a close look at the max vehicle research efficiency and the reward percentage. Now, I'll in editing, I'll go through, I'll put some red arrows on the screen pointing at the stuff I'm talking about here. But down at the bottom, you're going to see it's got the max vehicle research efficiency um, ranks two through four. This is a rank three vehicle, so if we're researching something one rank below the same rank or one rank above, we're going to get the maximum research points um, out of our mission results. If I use the J22A1 here that I've got highlighted to research the Saab Lansen, I'm not going to get the full bonus um, that, that I would otherwise. I'm not going to get the full bonus because the max vehicle research efficiency is only ranks two through four and that's a vehicle down in rank six so i'm not going to get all my points now 
You'll also notice it's got the reward percentage. That's a separate line item. For the J21A, it's 305. For the J22, it's 292. And the B18B is 292. So in rank three, I, I went through and, you know, I planned this in advance. I picked the J21A um, because it's an extremely good aircraft and it has the higher percentage of the reward modifier there. So in a given mission, if I perform the same, if I shoot down the same number of players, if I have the same activity time, blow up the same amount of ground targets, the J21A1 is going to get a slightly higher reward than these other aircraft. So that's why I went with that. And same thing uh, down into, and I used the J21A to grind out the B18B and also the A21A3. Now in rank four, I picked um, the A21A3 for an interesting reason. So you're going to see the, the reward percentage is 357, right? The J26 also has 357. The T18B also has 357. And you know, I'm sorry, uh, the T18B57 has 357. The regular T18B, 344, J21A2, 344. Well, I picked the J21A3 um, primarily because not only does it have, you know, a, a very efficient reward modifier for this rank, but this is a monster plane. Um, you know, the J21s have a, a reputation for being like really overpowered aircraft, and they are. They're, they're just amazing death machines. Um, so I went with the A21A3 over like the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the A21A3 over the J21A2, um, just cause I was confident I was going to be able to do reasonably good with it. And it's got, you know, the, the good reward percentage. And I used that to grind out the rest of rank four and up to the Saab 105G. The Saab 105G was a workhorse for me, um, now, this aircraft only has the reward percentage of 447, right? If I look at the A29B, it's also got the 447, the J29A, 447. A couple of these others are like, you know, the, the 421s, the 434s, and the sk 60 has got the 434. So, the Saab 105G has a good reward percentage for its rank. And just coincidentally, I happen to be really good with this plane. Um, I actually have a review of it up, the SK-60 and the Saab 105G. Um, I did them together. It was like one of the first vehicle reviews I posted, like one of the first two or three uh, at the beginning of last year. Um, this thing was a workhorse for me. I, I really considered getting the talisman for it, and looking back, maybe I should have, but um, I used the Saab 105G to grind out all of the rest of Rank 5, as well as most of my research in rank six. I've flown the J29F enough to spade it, um, but the Saab 105 with its research efficiency of ranks four through six, I used it to grind out basically all of rank six. That's when um, I switched over to using the J29F and the, the 105G, even though it wasn't the most efficient to grind out the Draken, um, I still used it for like the first half of the Draken before I switched over to the J29F, um, which is also a very good plane that I did well with um, to, to grind out the rest of the Draken. And I used the Draken for finishing out rank 7. So the method I used to climb through the tree was flying very specific targeted vehicles and using them to unlock the rest of the planes. Um... If you find that in a given tech tree, the most efficient vehicle is one that you're just terrible with or you don't like flying, maybe it's a bomber and you hate flying bombers, pick a plane that, you know, you're going to be able to play for hours at a time because that's what it really comes down to. Now, another thing to talk about, and this is um, like the second really important point, is the game modes and how I played them. So... Ranks 1 through about 5 for most of the tech trees, or, or maybe rank 4 for some of them, um, you're going to be doing arcade battles most of the time. Now, I switch over to realistic battles with air trees once I get up to around battle rating 8.0. In my case with the Saab 105G, this is where I switched to realistic battles. Everything before this I did with arcade. 
Um, around 8.0 is where air arcade battles start to get really stupid and toxic um, with just nothing but, you know, you, you spawn in and you're immediately spawn camped. You know, you, you live for like 10 seconds and it's pointless and stupid. Um, so I, I don't bother with that. I play realistic battles for, like exclusively from 8.0 up. Also, the queue times are very long for air arcade battles at the higher ranks. If you are someone who has been playing primarily air arcade, even up into the jet tiers, you might be accustomed to 10-15 minute queue times. Well, just for the heck of it, switch over and set it to realistic battles in queue, and you'll get into a match probably in less than a minute or two, uh, because that's where all the players are at the jet tier. So in addition to the game mode being better, I was able to get more matches in per hour, which dramatically increased um, the research I was able to get. And also, you get more rewards out of realistic battles than you do out of arcade anyway, so that also helped. So, if the rewards generally are better in realistic battles, why was I flying arcade at the lower tiers? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, I talked about the queue times at the lo um, at the higher tiers being bad for arcade battles. At the lower tiers, the queue times for realistic battles are lower. And also, realistic battles in these slow prop aircraft are really slow paced. So it just comes down to, I can get more matches done per hour in low tier arcade than I can with low tier realistic. And even if the rewards for like the same performance per match are lower, I'm getting enough matches in per hour where it makes up the difference. Um, now, when I go into arcade battles, when I'm when I'm actually grinding rather than just playing for fun or like goofing around with some friends or something, um, if I'm you know if I'm grinding if I've got an hour of just research grinding time, let me show you something I've got here. So if I go to my interactive items, I've got, look at that, 145 um, universal backups. Um, these just show up in, like, loot boxes and stuff and, you know, like, battle trophies just throughout the course of playing the game. I use these all the friggin' time when I'm grinding the tech trees. So what I would do is, like... The J21A3, all right? I'm going into arcade battles with the J21A3 in rank rank 4 here. My lineup would be just the J21A3 in slot 1. The rest of this trash would be empty. And I would apply, like, a dozen backup vehicles onto the J21A3. And I wouldn't necessarily always fly it out over and over again. That's that's That would be a mistake. What I would do is, if I found that I was in a match where I was doing well, if I was getting, like, at least four to six kills per spawn, then I would use the backup vehicles so that at the end of that match, my total kill count and my total score would be a lot higher. You know, over over a dozen or so for only using, like, maybe one or two um, of the... Excuse me. Of the universal backups. Now, that's also um, a strategy you can compound using the, the backups strategically if you're in, like, a hot streak. Use that with the research boosters. So, I didn't waste... You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm in a J21A3 and I, I fly out into a match and I got, you know, up-tiered or something, or just, you know, the player balance on the teams, uh, you know, I'm up against people who are just kicking my butt... I'm not going to waste my backup vehicles. I'm just going to go back to hangar after I die. Um, and then, you know, queue up into the next match where maybe I'm going to do better. And maybe it's going to justify uh, using those backup vehicles and, and burning through them. So that's that's the strategy that I use for getting up through the tech tree. That's most of it. Um, the other thing, of course, is, you know, use these these boosters as much as you can. Um, like if I go into the, the war bond shop, I don't, I don't have a lot right here cause the new season just started and I haven't been playing as much the last couple of weeks, but you know, I use war bonds to buy out these, you know, the boosters and stuff. Um, 
anything you can do to get these research point boosters and have those active when you're doing, you know, your grinding sessions for the week. Um, that should be obvious. Now, this brings us to the topic of premium vehicles. Hey, Tim from the future here. Uh, I want to interject real quick and talk about something I forgot to mention um, when I did the, the main segment. Um, Golden Eagles and premium account. Do not use Golden Eagles to buy planes. Um, by that, I mean to speed up the research and do a research boost. Do not use Golden Eagles to do this. Um, the conversion ratio of Golden Eagles to research points is absolutely terrible. And beyond, like, rank 1 or maybe rank 2, it is absolutely not worth it. Do not use Golden Eagles to speed up the research points. If you're going to use GEs, I would recommend using GEs when you get a plane that you're going to use for grinding. Use GEs to get maybe the first couple of upgrades. And just make your stock grind a little bit less painful. That's it. That's that's the only thing, at least in my opinion, that you should really be using GEs for in terms of vehicles. Um, the main thing is premium account. Um, geez, I have no idea how I racked up so many days. Uh, but what I usually do is when, when the premium account goes on sale like once or twice a year... Um, that's when I will cave in and get myself, you know, I'll renew my premium account for the year. Um, I personally don't mind spending on the premium account. You know, it's a free game and the developers, they got to make money somehow. Um, so this is where I choose to spend my money on the game. And as you can see here, um, you get significant bonuses to your research points. It's basically double. So everything I talk about in the main segment of this video goes literally twice as fast with a premium account. Um, and it speeds up your Silver Lion grind. So if you're going to spend money on the game, my personal suggestion is that getting a premium account is the most efficient and effective place to spend money. And also something to think about, right? If you're a free-to-play uh, free play player or you don't like spending a lot of money on a game like this. That's totally fine. No judgment. Um, it, or if you only want to spend a little bit, or maybe you get some GEs from like, you know, the recruit a buddy thing or something, you don't, don't know what to do with them. One day of premium account is 190 GEs. So if maybe you block off a Saturday that you know you're going to set aside like six hours for just grinding in one of the tech trees consider doing a premium account for just one day. Um, you know, it might end up being an extremely efficient and effective use of those 190 Golden Eagles. So anyway, um, that's it for GE's and premium account. At this point, I'll hand you back to Tim from the past. I am not a person who judges premium players. You know, a lot of people in the community will complain, oh, it's pay to win. I don't, I don't really think that it is. It's pay to grind faster is the way I look at it. The majority of the time, these premium vehicles are not especially overpowered compared to, you know, the things they're facing. Like, there are exceptions. The J35A at battle rating 9.7 is an extremely effective place to be. Um... Like, some of these these prop aircraft are not necessarily super overpowered, you know, for, for what they are. Now, the big advantage with the premium vehicles is if you look down at the bottom in the max vehicle research efficiency, ranks 1 through 6 on the Saab 1050E, even though this vehicle's in rank 5. So, it gets the research efficiency all the way down to rank 1. So, if you... If you're using the Saab 105, you can use this to efficient, efficiently research this lower-tiered stuff. Now, again, you know, the community is kind of split on whether or not people should be doing that. You know, some people, like, really hold a grudge against premium flyers and, oh, you're a wallet warrior and all that kind of stuff. 
I personally don't care. I, I try not to judge. One of the things that I have found premium aircraft, you know, to be good with in that context is when a new tech tree comes out. Like when Israel um, is, you know, uh, when Israel became available, getting that premium A4 um, is a way for someone who's not a new player. You know, I've been playing this for a long time. Um, to get through some of the rough spots in the tech tree a little bit faster. Because the premium aircraft also have really good research rewards, right? So look at the Saab 105G. The research percentage reward is 447 at 8.3. Down there. Well, the Saab 1050E has a research reward percentage of 655 at battle rating 8.3. So by any objective criteria, this is going to be a more effective aircraft if you can pull the same scores every mission um, than the Saab 105G. So that's, you know, that's honestly, in my opinion, that's what you're paying for if you get a premium aircraft is, is those, those research and Silver Lion efficiency boosts. Um, so that's basically the method I use to get through the tech trees in War Thunder. I've, I've been doing this, you know, for a long time. I didn't really refine this until, like, Ital the Italian tree came out. That's when I first really started doing the targeted research to, like, leapfrog my way up through the tree. Um, before that, I was just kind of researching whatever vehicles I thought were more interesting and, and flying in the ones that were a little bit more fun without really paying attention to, to how efficient any of the particular vehicles are. So, in any case, I've been rambling for a while. I'll shut up, um, and I'll, I'll encourage you again to drop a comment if you've got some tips of ways to grind through the research trees that work better for you, if you've got some stuff that I didn't talk about, um, or maybe if you just want to dunk on people who are getting a premium plane, you know, that, that's all fine. Uh, just understand, if you ever think about getting a higher tier premium vehicle, there's going to be a learning curve, and you're going to struggle a lot at first. Um, so, you know, this is par for the course when you're, if you're going to jump ahead. So, anyway, that's the method I use. Um, drop some comments, uh, let people know what you're doing to get through the research trees, and hopefully we can all learn from each other and make the grind a little bit less painful. As always, thanks for watching. I'm <laughs> sorry.